What is rabbit starvation? Hi there, this is Big Spruce Rabbitry, and today I'll be going over a big misconception about eating rabbit. I'll starve to death if I eat rabbit! Blech. This is sometimes called rabbit starvation and comes from the days of polar exploration when polar explorers would eat rabbits that were basically starving in winter and then starve to death themselves. And then the folks back home would blame the rabbits and not the kind of crazy situations these explorers are putting themselves into for their eventual demise. This arctic hare that we hunted in mid-April doesn't have the best meat quality. Its back legs are a little on the thin side and it doesn't have a lot of meat along the back strap. This is what one of these polar explorers probably would have been eating. And they may have been eating things that were even in worse condition than this rabbit was. But we're still not going to let this go to waste. The problem with eating an animal that is in poor body condition is that it has used up its fat reserves. If we look inside this arctic hare, it doesn't have really any fat. And that means that the meat is much higher in protein than it would have been if it, the animal was in good body condition. Well, this rabbit was a wild rabbit at the end of winter, so it kind of makes sense. Eating meat like this can cause an acute form of malnutrition called protein poisoning. The symptoms of protein poisoning are diarrhea, headache, fatigue, low blood pressure, low heart rate, and a very strong craving for fat. I'm not worried at all about getting protein poisoning from eating this rabbit, so I'm going to stew him for dinner. But to be on the safe side, I will be putting in a couple of turkey backs, which are full of fat. The turkey backs are full of saturated fat, so we'll make up for anything missing in the arctic hare. So I'll go take this in the house and stew it. hair and turkey back stew for a couple of hours till the meat's falling off the bones. But while it's cooking, let's talk about the nutrition of rabbit meat. First of all, an arctic hare and a rabbit are not the same thing. They're actually quite different animals. And the meat is quite different. They taste a lot different. An arctic hare has dark meat where a domestic rabbit has white meat. So there's obviously some stuff that's pretty different about the two, but I wasn't able to find any nutritional information specifically to arctic hares. So I'll really be focusing this video on domestic rabbits. If the difference between arctic hares having dark meat and domestic rabbits having white meat is anything like chickens and turkeys, then the, you would expect the darker meat to have more fat and less protein than the white meat, but they're very different animals. I mean, birds versus mammals, I wouldn't even go there saying that's enough to be able to say anything. Still, if I had to guess, a wild arctic hare and a wild rabbit would have about the same protein and fat content, and both would be different than a domestic rabbit. A domestic rabbit you'd expect to have more fat and less protein in the meat because, well, they sit around and eat all day and they don't exercise anywhere near as much as their wild brethren. This is a rabbit that we raised on our homestead. I just finished processing it and if we look inside the body cavity you can see that it's got quite a bit of white stuff. This white is fat, 
This rabbit was a bit older than your average friar, being about six months old, so it had a lot of time to develop fat. Rabbit fat isn't as tasty as something like chicken fat is, but on our homestead, I find that you can pull out the rabbit fat and grind it up in sausage and, and then use the sausage seasonings to cover up the slightly off flavor that comes with rabbit fat. That brings me to the fact that on our homestead, most of the rabbits we eat are overfed domestic rabbits that have plenty of fat. There's a lot of nutritional information available for domestic rabbits, and if you take one pound of domestic rabbit meat, this is what you would expect to find in it. I'm going to compare rabbit and chicken meat. I'm only looking at skinless chicken, since you can't really eat the skin on a rabbit because of the hair. If you leave the skin on a chicken, it has a much higher fat content, but that kind of brings me to a point that it really matters what part of an animal you're eating as far as the nutrition goes. So I'll introduce you to a couple of our chickens. This little guy is a Cornish cross. He's about a week and a half old and is basically growing insanely fast. This breed of chicken has basically been bred to be obese. It puts on fat at the expense of protein. This little chicken is an Ancona and is an egg producing breed. It is only a couple of days younger than our Cornish Cross and you can really see the size difference. Since heritage breeds and egg laying breeds are not really eaten commonly in today's world, we don't really have the statistics to be able to say what the fat and protein content is in them, and it is almost certainly lower than in a meat producing breed. I should probably go put these chickens back and check on the stew. Well, the stew's ready to be deboned! And there's a hair and turkey broth. I'm going to add some veggies. Okay, before I put in the veggies, let's talk a little bit more about protein poisoning. This is a real problem, but you could get protein poisoning from eating chicken alone, and we, nobody really worries about chicken starvation, so you shouldn't be worrying about rabbit starvation either. It's very important to just eat balanced meals and to be aware of what you're eating and make sure you're not eating animals that are in poor body condition unless you're adding the fat back. So I'm going to throw in some carrots, potatoes, and onions. Just chop them pretty big, just we're doing this rustic.
Okay. Let's add some Italian seasoning and some salt, and it'll be ready to cook for another 45 minutes. There it is, ready to be cooked for another 45 minutes. See these scraps? I'll save them and dry them out and grind them up for the birds. These carrot tops, I'm gonna to go give to the bunnies. Carrot tops, guys. Picky, picky, come on, eat them. I think the last time in American history when people really had to think about reusing everything the way we do on our homestead was probably back during the Great Depression. So I'm going to show you how you would have gotten a rabbit from a meat market back then. This is an Arctic hare that my husband just dispatched when he got home. This Arctic hare has a body that's very similar to a rabbit, so I'm going to walk you through how you would have gotten a rabbit in a meat market in the Great Depression. So often a, meat, a rabbit in the meat market would still have its back feet left on. That's a way of telling that it was actually a rabbit. But if they didn't leave the back feet on, then the other thing that a meat market would use is that they would show the kid leave the kidneys in. The kidneys in a rabbit are offset by a little bit instead of parallel. If they are parallel, then it's a cat and somebody's trying to sell you something you don't want to eat. Last night it was getting a little bit too dark for me to film the stew getting done, so I heated some up for my lunch today. Nutrition science and nutrition labels are a good guideline for understanding the nutrition that is in food, but they tend to ignore the body condition of animals and the breed of animals, so are at best a rough guideline. All food comes from living things, so isn't the easiest thing to standardize. That's why you should eat balanced meals. I'm going to eat my soup before it starts to get cold. I hope you learned something. Like, comment, subscribe, and check out our farm store in the description.